It is day seven of Cub Spring training, day four for me, and I've been seeing a lot. I want to give you guys a quick report as I'm out here at Sloan Park here in Mesa, Arizona. Hey, Setup Nation, I wanna go ahead and give you guys a quick update. And first of all, I just wanna say thank you so, so much because we have been getting so much great feedback about the content. For me, I, I, I just love coming out here to Sloan Park and just experiencing spring training, but recording stuff along the way, putting it out on YouTube, putting it out on Twitter, putting it out on Instagram, and you all are raving about the content. And for me, it's it's fun, it's simple. I, I, I honestly feel like I'm not doing a whole lot, but it's cool to hear all the positive feedback. So keep on loving that, keep on sharing it. If you're not here at spring training, get get down here. Like there's still time. It's Tuesday, February 20th and games start on Friday, which is crazy to think that it's starting in on the 23rd of February. It feels like the earliest the games have ever started, but uh, there's still time. Get on over here. Would love to shake your hand. I've already met a few of you that are subscribed to the channel. Met some really cool people. I've had a chance to get dinner with Boog. I've talked to Bruce Levine a ton over here, Ryan Herrera. Met uh, Rich Biesterfeld, who was on the show recently too, and he puts out just amazing photos on uh, Cubs Twitter. So make sure you're following him as well. It's, uh, I believe it's Beast, B-I-E-S-T 22 on Twitter. Make sure you're following him. And this has just been such a fun, like I've, I've gone to spring training, the games, I've gone to the practices as a, as a fan, but going as a fan that's also creating content for all of you out there has been just another level of rewarding and exciting. And, and I take a lot of my days of being uh, a, a sports reporter and also the high intensity of doing things like the Juco World Series in Grand Junction, Colorado, where you have to get content out quickly for the audience and, and people who aren't there get to see that from afar and they love it. And and I feel like I'm doing a, a second version of the Juco World Series now at spring training uh, on just a, a really fun level for me. So selfishly, this has been a lot of fun. Um, but hey, let's talk a little bit about uh, what's been going on. And by the way, if, if in case you missed it, we did have a interview with Luke Little. We just posted that this morning as well. Make sure you go check that out. Luke is an awesome guy, and obviously he made his debut last year for the Cubs, and he's got a lot to prove here in spring training, but I see him being a big part of this team, and we sat down and talked about that and how he's preparing to potentially make this team. So go check it out. Uh, but, you know, I'm not sure if you guys saw uh, – so really major hot stove moments yesterday with David Peralta and Dominic Smith getting signed to minor league deals for the Cubs. And I was extremely relieved to, for the second part of that sentence that I just mentioned, minor league deals, because as soon as I saw those come through on Twitter, I was like, what? What are we? I mean, no, no offense to David Peralta and Dominic Smith, but, you know, they're second tier players when they were at their best. And now they've really declined in their last few years and to me just not really the the fit that we're looking for to me th this team is in going two different ways one of two ways this season and, and it's starting to become more clear maybe it's the second way the first way is making big moves right getting Bellinger getting a Matt Chapman getting a Jordan Montgomery so far Shota Imanaga is the biggest signing this offseason which I would consider exciting but not necessarily a big move uh, then the second part of that is seeing what the prospects can do here in 2024 and neither Dom Smith nor David Peralta fit either one of those plans they're not a prospect and they're definitely not a big move so to see that being minor league deals uh, it gives me a little bit of relief, but also I'm just I'm kind of over here like scratching my head like why? What's what's the point? I mean, you've got David Peralta who's an outfielder and a crowded outfield already. You've got Happ in left, Suzuki in right, probably PCA slash Talkman in center depending on how this team wants to start the year. You've got Canario who's more likely to be a DH. You've got Morel who has shown that he can play some outfield in the past, but it looks like they're going to try him at third base. And then You've got guys like Owen Casey that are coming up. You've got guys like Kevin Alcantara who probably won't make an appearance this year, but just a lot of kind of like, hey, is is that really going to be our plan B if, let's say, Suzuki or Hap or, or Talkman get hurt? Is that really our plan B is playing a guy like David Peralta who hasn't had an OPS over 690 in the last four or five seasons? I think the last time he was actually over... 800 was in 2019 last year he had a 675 ops with the dodgers and he's 36 years old and then you have dom smith who's a first baseman 
And he had a really good 2020. He hit 10 home runs in 50 games, a 993 OPS. But since then, his OPS has not gone above 692. And you've got Mervis at first. You now have Michael Bush at first. Uh, you also have Jared Young, who we haven't talked a lot about this offseason at all. Uh, but he played a little bit of first base as well last year. So I'd much rather see any of those three guys be given a shot than... Dom Smith, no offense again to Dom Smith. So maybe it's a veteran thing. Maybe it's a leadership thing. I don't know. I just don't quite understand it. But moving our attention over to spring training, here's some of the things that I've been seeing. Uh, let's start with Patrick Wisdom. In live BP, Patrick Wisdom has been hitting, and I'm not talking about BP, you know, from the coaches. I'm talking live pitching sessions from uh, Hendricks and Assad and Wicks and guys like that. He has been hitting the ball with authority up the middle and to the right side of the field, which we just don't really see much from Patrick Wisdom. So I wonder if there's been a change of approach for him to be a more complete hitter, which would help his case, especially given the fact that third base is kind of wide open at the moment. Uh, they're going to be trying out Morrell, which I have not seen Morrell play any third base. I did get to see him uh, sign a ball and hug my wife yesterday, and, we, and he got to, to meet us, and that was uh, <laughs> really one of our top things that we wanted to get out of spring training. So that was super, super cool. Uh, but haven't seen him play third base yet. Saw a couple things from Marquis. They posted a couple highlights. That was cool to see. But from a fan's perspective of where I have access to, I don't have a media pass out here. I'm just doing as much as I can, seeing as much as I can from a legal uh, perspective. Uh, I have not seen him play third base. But again, Patrick Wisdom looks, I haven't seen Wisdom taking anything on the infield either. It looks like a lot of the work that he's been doing has been with the bat. So that has been good to see that he's kind of hitting all fields. Speaking of third base and maybe some change of approach, Miles Mastroboni, uh, hate to use the phrase, but I'm going to quote, say, best shape of his life <laughs> because the dude has got some guns. If you have not seen any of the videos that I posted, he has uh, definitely been hit in the gym. So good to see uh, Miles doing that. You know, again, a guy who could potentially be a third base spot. But, you know, you've got Madrigal, you've got Wisdom, you've got Miles Masterboni, and you've got Morell, basically all four battling for one spot. And I think we all want to see Christopher Morell step it up. But who knows? Maybe Miles Masterboni uh, could be a potential there as well. Um, Michael Bush been putting a lot of time in over at first base. It seems like before practice even starts, I've been getting out here 8 a.m. Practice has been starting at 10. He's out here at 9, 9.30, working on receiving drills, working on first base drills, working on uh, footwork, working on a lot of things, which is really encouraging because a lot of us have heard, hey, he's got the bat, but he doesn't necessarily have the glove or the defense. So to see that motivation from a young guy, 26 years old who really hasn't been given a shot a true shot at the majors yet wanting to come in and prove himself and maybe prove some people wrong uh we've also posted some of his drill work on our youtube channel so make sure you go check that out i think last time i checked it was like 2,000 views on it so a lot of you have been enjoying that um but really good to see that bush has been putting in some time from a pitching perspective drew smiley as a lot of you know been working a lot with driveline this off season and he added a splitter uh, I believe he's calling it a splitter. I don't know if he's calling it something else, but I believe the splitter is what he's uh, referring to it as. And, you know, we saw a couple of those in live. Uh, he was pitching to live hitters yesterday. Again, you can go see the raw video of that on our YouTube channel. Um, a couple of them looked like, you know, I think he got a couple swings and misses if memory serves correctly. And I remember a couple of those pitches kind of looking like, hey, was that a changeup? What was that? And, and I think that was the splitter. Uh, but... You could tell it was kind of messing with a little bit of the rest of his release. A lot of his fastballs were running up and away. A lot of his curveballs were buried a little bit too far down in the dirt or hanging. So I think he's still trying to get a feel for how does he mix that pitch in while also being effective with his fastball and curveball. Caleb Killian looked good. Ben Brown looked good. Two prospects. Uh, ben Brown obviously on the upswing. Caleb Killian trying to reprove himself to the organization right now. Both of them looked good, bringing the heat. Uh, Killian, you know, has always had a little bit of the uh, wildness uh, issues, and it, it still was a little bit apparent in the the live session that I saw, but not nearly as, you know, when he was missing, it was three or four inches, not where we've been accustomed to and seeing him in games where it was sometimes hitting batters or way high and away or way up and in or down buried in the dirt when he wasn't meaning to do that. You know, those he looked a little bit more under control. Uh, but Ben Brown was really cool to see. Guy is just comes out of his hand very easily. 
I got to talk to him a little bit too, and he's just a very re laid back, relaxed dude. Um, you can tell he already has kind of the mindset that he's gonna be here, um, and, and that's exciting to see. Sorry if you can hear the trucks behind me and the planes above me. Uh, we, they're preparing the fields right now, and we're right next to a, an airport. Um, Jordan Wicks has probably been the best live session I've seen so far. That change up was, I mean, M Miguel Amaya had a swing that <laughs> it looked like as soon as he started swinging, he's like, why am I swinging at this pitch and stopped halfway, but couldn't stop himself. Uh, I think, uh, Talkman or a couple other guys had some really ugly swings off of the change up. So good to see that he's. Basically, I, I don't want to say mid-season form because, you know, um, he only threw about 20, 30 pitches, but he looked really good. And uh, that's that's about what I've seen so far. There, You know, yesterday was the first official day of workout, so you saw a lot more from the position players like Suzuki and Morell and um, still didn't see Dansby. So, you know, there's three or four fields out here that there's something going on at all times, so I just must be missing him as I'm going going by. I've seen him from afar, but not on the field or anything. Uh, but if you guys haven't been out to spring training, man, like it, it is amazing. It, you, you feel like you're right next to the players. We got to have conversations with, gosh, who have we talked to? We've talked to Assad. We've talked to Wisniewski. We've talked to Ethan Roberts, Christopher Morell, uh, I, just to name a few. I, Julian Merriweather, Mark Leiter. And by the way, I've gotten autographs from all these guys. We're going to be doing giveaways. Sorry, not the Christopher Morell one. I apologize, guys, but that is my wife's favorite player, and we're just not going to give away that ball. So just about every other one, though, we will be doing a giveaway. Speaking of doing a giveaway, make sure you go check out that Luke Little interview because we are giving away a Luke Little autographed baseball if you go and follow the steps that we provide on that interview with Luke, go check it out. The video just popped up for you right now. And games start on Friday, okay? February 23rd, first game, Cubs in spring training. Uh, pretty crazy to think. I, I feel like it happens earlier and earlier and earlier every year, and especially with the season starting in March this year. Uh, it makes sense that spring training games are starting earlier, but you know, as a position player, if you're not out here earlier, you're literally having your first practice yesterday on Monday and then first game on Friday. That's pretty quick. And for a guy like Dansby Swanson who says, you know, he doesn't even hardly do any, at least I've heard through the grapevine, I don't want to say that he told me this, but uh, I've heard through the grapevine that he doesn't even take round balls in the off season. Man, you know, four or five days of practice and then you're in game situation. I hope it's like riding a bike <laughs> because that, that sounds stressful to me. Uh, but make sure you get out here to AZ, but also just make sure you're subscribed to us, following along. We're going to keep on pumping out the content, giving you guys what you want. If you want anything additional, let me know. I know a few of you have been like, I'd like a different angle, or man, it, that was kind of uh, you know anticlimactic. I can only control so much. Sorry, guys, I can't tell Matt Shaw what to do, and is it bad? I, I can't get around on the other side uh, on a lot of these fields because that's where the media is allowed to be, and I'm not considered media. So... Um, I'm doing the best I can, and I hope uh, that you guys have seen it. I'm having a lot of fun with it, and I'm having a lot of fun hearing from all of you. So that's going to do it right now here for me, Kyle Stanley, the setup man. I'm going to go put my arm on ice and keep on bringing you content here from spring training at Sloan Park in Mesa, Arizona. Thanks, guys.